It's the body breakdown. <laughs> Continuing on with our medical terminology, um, this week is all about the spine. Hey, all you ghouls and goblins, welcome back to the Body Breakdown podcast this week. And uh, we got a scary good episode for you. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of different um, Halloween themed things coming out this week, so make sure you check out our newsletter. You know, every year, if you're a fan of us, you know that we take Halloween. Uh, a little too seriously. A little, a little awesome, actually. <laughs> <laughs> a little too seriously. Right. <laughs> serious is probably not even the right word. <laughs> you know, we, we have a tendency to really go all out with our costumes, and this year it's going to be a very special 2020-themed costume. Oh, yeah. mm. If you don't want to miss it, make sure you check it out, because we'll be posting a video on the day of Halloween, so Saturday. Check it. But this week, we are continuing on with our medical terminology. Um, this week is all about the spine, correct? Yep, yep, yep. Um, yeah, there's a couple. Just back pain issues. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So a lot of a lot of these terms you're going to hear if you have back pain and you've visited the doctor, maybe a family friend, husband, mom, dad, relative in general, will probably hear some of these things, or you might as well. So that's why we're going over that this week. And in case you didn't notice, we also have a new little uh, setup this week. Testing it out, see how it all goes. Kind of like yeah. it. I get to look at you guys. Yes, and yes. Interact and not feel weird. Got like, special guests back here, Barry Bones. Barry, Barry Bones. I'm not stuck looking at these two the whole time. I'm really pumped for that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anything else, or should we just go ahead and jump right in? Let's get rocking. Let's get into it. Okay, so first medical term that we're going to talk about is going to be spinal stenosis. So, what exactly is spinal stenosis? It's mainly defined as narrowing in the spine. So that's whenever, the, when we say narrowing, so Tyler, go and turn it sideways for me there. This little uh, spacing in between here, we start losing that gapping. And as you can see, there's little nerves or uh, nerves that are inside there that the, 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 the actual spine and vertebrae will now start compressing that, um, those nerves, right? Like yeah. pinch mm -hmm. the nerves kind yeah, of? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead, Tyler. What are, yeah, so there? a lot of times what I see whenever somebody has spinal stenosis is they have... Um, like you have your quadriceps that attach to the front side. Yeah, David can be my holder now. <laughs> attached to the front side of the pelvis here. And what they end up doing is it rotates the pelvis forward like this. And what you can see is now all those vertebrae start to really shift forward. Because like otherwise you're going to walk like, you know, well, I don't yeah. know, I'm going to try to even explain it like almost I'm going to have to stand up. Yeah, so yeah. otherwise if those quadriceps are tight, you're going to be like walking around yeah. like this. So you're not going to do that. So what you end up doing is you extend your lower back to stand up straight. Because always what you're going to do is you're going to keep this portion of your skull and this part of your spine, it's always going to be in a straight line. Otherwise, you're going to be falling down. That's what maintains center of gravity. So your body will always maintain that. So whenever that happens, as we rotate forward there, and then you extend back, now that space in the, where you're like technically the spinal cord yeah. actually gets impinged. So that's where you end up starting to get like a lot of nerve issues. And that's where they talk about the narrowing of the spine happens technically within that area. So really what we end up doing is we technically loosen up the quadriceps. So we'll stretch those and you can even see all of these vertebrae on the back side. If you rotate forward and then extend back, yeah. look at all those touching. So the amount of compression that you end up having on your actual vertebrae starts to wear technically the disc out on this front side here because all of that pressure starts wearing those out at the same time. Yeah, but I think even just the, the number one thing with this one is the pain's coming from there's no room in between these uh, vertebrae now and these uh, nerves that should be able to run out are just getting smashed. And that's where the pain's coming from is nerves being smashed like that. And that's what is causing the pain. So even this one here has got a little redness and it's showing the irritation from when that's happening. So that's what's happening when you're having having this is there's no space in between those in between those vertebrae and those nerve roots have nowhere to go. And a lot of times, anytime that you do have this, you usually end up seeing with it like bulging disc, herniated yeah, disc, yeah, stuff yeah, along yeah. those lines and all kind of correlate with it more yeah, or less. And that it starts leading to that at that yes, point in time. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So whenever, I know you talked a little bit about stretching the quadriceps, but what else uh, do you guys at TNT do in order to help fix that in the long right. term? So biggest thing, we got to get your, you, we got to get your skeletal structures back into their original position. So if you're rotated forward like this and extended back like that, what we need to do is we need to get you back underneath like this and tilted forward a little bit. And so you can see now whenever I do this, so your quadriceps being tight, if I alleviate the stress there, look how much spacing happens there. And then the other component, what we would do is we would try to release these trunk extenders as well 
So then it's going to flex the spine forward. Now you have trunk lots of trunk extenders would be coming, coming down, down the sides. Down the sides, yep. connecting so, the long piece, whatever. Okay. And really, that generates technically spacing in between here. So it starts to technically, now you get that, the narrowing that would be happening back there is no longer there. Now you have good spacing between them, and that's really good. Yeah, I'll give another way away that could potentially happen, too. I think you were almost hitting on it anyway. There's little muscles that attach in between yeah. these vertebrae and in between these vertebrae, and then they actually go cross side and like this. There's little muscles going there. So even whenever you're stuck in this position for a really long time, Though all like that, like all those muscles now start getting tighter and tighter and tighter, and they're little bitty muscles. They're not 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 really big muscles. So those, whenever you stand back up, these these things are tight, and they don't let that let go of that vertebra. Those vertebrae will be able to separate apart like that. They're too tight to do that. So you have to go work those trunk extenders and all these small little muscles in here to make sure they can separate whenever your pelvis is in the right spot, where they're not just stuck like that all the time. And that's what happens. It's the the pelvis being the wrong problem is the big part, but these are little bitty things that happen over time of being stuck in that position for a long period of time. Too. And then there would be two components that we would look at. So first stage would to get you out of pain would be we would loosen up your quadriceps, pull down. You loosen up your quadriceps to let the pelvis drop back into position, and then loosen up your trunk extenders this side because they're going to attach to the back side of the iliac crest here, and also pull the pelvis up. So that's how much compression really starts to add to and narrowing up that technical area. So then the other side of it is we would be working on strengthening the abdominals, attaches here at the rib cage and then here at the pubis. So if I was to pull and that was to get stronger, you can see the separation of the vertebrae there. Mm -hmm. So that's what, and then it gets technically that spacing back yeah. where it's supposed so to be. So what he was going to get, it takes the front of the pelvis and lifts it back up. And that's what it's supposed to do because the, he was, the quads were pulling the front of the pelvis back. So that will be the pull in the front of the pelvis up. And then you would have the so, same thing. Go yep, ahead. Go ahead. And then we would look at like the glutes on the back side attach to the back side of the, mm -hmm. the iliac crest back here. And then what we end up doing is we activate those to once again down. to hold the pelvis down yep, as well. Yep. So, so yeah, you have a yep, the back side pulling you have a kind of tug of war game on the back side, trunk ascenders pulling up while the glutes are pulling down. And then on the uh, same thing on this side, the front side of the quads and hip flexors are pulling down while the abdominals are pulling up. Yeah. So, so, so tug of war. And really, back to it, so really the abdominals are going to loosen up the trunk extenders, yep. and then the glutes are going to loosen up the quadriceps. That's mm -hmm. what's going to hold everything in place so you don't have pain again. And that's really the key is where most people go wrong is they'll do those stretches, but any time that you go and rework those areas, they get tight again and you have the same problem. So what we have to do is we have to equalize the balance of strength that you have and try to activate those muscle groups um, to get to the equalized strength as the other side so we don't have problems long term. And that's kind of our overall goal. That's why you need to exercise. Yep, yeah. that's a kind of do the right, right exercise. exercise. So we so, have uh, I was going to yeah. say, so the mobility is there to help you get out of pain initially. Yes. And the strength is there to help you get out of pain long term. 100%. Yes. That's exactly what I was just going to yeah. say. And it's, a, and, and, it's a, yes, exactly. and it's a progression. It's like you have to make sure that you go through those stages yeah. because yeah. if you try to activate the abdominals and the glutes, whenever those muscle groups are locked up, if you try to skip steps through the stage, mm -hmm. then what you end up doing is you, you can't, like, if you're trying to activate these muscle groups and you're stuck in this position, it just doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. So, like, you're, it's, there's too much force in the opposing direction that those muscles don't have the strength to be able to do that. We have to break down those other muscles first so it allows for actually the movement of the vertebrae and the uh, pelvis in order to technically make the other muscles stronger. So in order to make a muscle stronger, you have to shorten it. If that muscle can't shorten because the other side's locked in place, you can't strengthen that muscle. Yep. 100%. Yep. Okay. Uh, so moving on to the next term. Now, I will clarify. I have trouble pronouncing this, <laughs> which is part of the reason why this is on a medical term list. Because if it's hard to pronounce, it's hard to understand for the general public, I 100%. would say. Yep. 100%. So, spondylolithesis. You got it. That went way smoother than <laughs> yeah. I had to practice. Really you practiced that, that, that was going that went way better. I was like, Spondylolithesis is yep. going to be our next medical term. So what exactly is that? So that's when, back up here, a vertebrae gets shifted forward and puts pressure on the disc below. That's what it is. So this guy would sh shift it forward and it's sliding out and putting pressure on that disc that's below. That's the easy, quick terminology for it. Okay. okay. So we're gonna go further. So how yeah, does that end up developing? Okay, okay, so we're on that one. Okay. Uh, so uh, what happens is something is pulling this disc forward. So something is 
pulling this way, like this. So like if your body's staying here and the pelvis was there, something's pulling that way. So what that is, it's our psoas. Our psoas attaches right here on the uh, vertebrae, right here on both sides. So if you have both psoases tight, and it's actually on all of these vertebrae right here, and you might have one part of it more tight than the other, but a lot of times they're all tight, uh, it's tight and then it'll be pulling the whole. So then when it gets tight, it literally takes this whole vertebrae and slides it forward just like that. that that's what's uh, causing it. Yeah. The psoas is also known as, like most people say, the hip flexor. Yep. So yeah. that's the muscle group. That's like the main hip flexor. The main hip flexor. Yeah. Yeah. But one of many. So one of many. many. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, so this is actually a little bit different than spondylosis, which sounds similar to spondylolisthesis and spondylosis. Yep. They have a similar kind of... Both words. Ver that you know. Yeah, yes. verbiage. Yes. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but spondylosis is going to be where in tear yep. and like a degenerative arthritis. Yeah, it's a right? more advanced version of degenerative disc. Yeah, uh, okay. and it like literally leads to where there's arthritis inside that where you're starting to get bone spurs and all that stuff. So that's usually mm -hmm. something that's been a problem for a really long time yeah. if it's getting that much arthritis build up and bone spur build up. And that is to say we talked about degenerative bulging and ruptured disc last week. So yep. if you don't know anything about that, make sure you check out last week's podcast because we dive into all of that just like we are right now. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Okay. Going into what's causing that, we said the psoas major. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So now we need to probably go into how we're going to fix that. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, so mainly, what we need to do is release that uh, psoas muscle. It's too. It's too tight. So the psoas, it's going to attach, like I said, to these vertebrae right here, and then it also comes and attaches on the inside. Let's use this one. Is it the inside of this femur, just right here? So it's going to be here and here. Oh, there you go. That better. There you go. Can see yep. it. There you go. On the inside of the femur here. So. Uh, anytime that you would pull your leg downward, this muscle is going to elongate. Anytime you're lifting your leg up like this, it's going to be shortened. So this position here will be able to look like when you're sitting. So that muscle would be shortened when you're sitting. So this is a lot of the times we see this as a problem is people sit and two, uh, do your little uh, tilt like you did a while ago into your pelvic dome. So you'd have someone sitting like this. The whole spines push forward like this because you're already in a seated position in bad postures. You'll see a lot of people sit with their uh, spine. Come show the image show like that. Show like what an anterior stand up and just show what that would do. So like or they're arching back will be arching. So like that, you'll see a lot of people look look like that when we walk in. <laughs> But that's happening when you're sitting. You're, you're sitting with your back arch. So that's what you're doing is you're sitting like this. So you see, one, that causes problem one we talked about today. And then now you're sitting with this muscle super shortened right now. So what we, whenever you go to stand up, this still stays all locked up. But you literally are pu pulling this down to stand up. So that, mu that uh, femur is now straightened as you stand up. And it now elongates that muscle. And if that muscle is really locked up, only thing that can happen. The problem happen is that it doesn't elongate. Yeah, so yeah, it's long. not elongated if it's locked up. Only thing else, if this femur's going going down because you got to stand up, there's no other option. So the only other option is this spine has got to come with it. So that's what happens. This vertebrae ends up getting pulled forward further and further and further until it literally slips too far forward and it slips out of position. Yeah, and where that's going to become a problem is it pulls it forward and then now it's going to impinge all those nerve roots. At the same yeah, time. actually, it's got two so, problems. You're 100. Yeah. That's one area. It can pull it this way. And uh, all the, it gets pulled this way, so there's no room in there for narrowing. But it also gets so, pulled so far out that there's no support on this disc below it. And this disc is literally like getting so much pressure pushed on it because it's too, this, this is too far forward and there's nothing underneath it for the disc. So it's, it's too far. It can be either or. You'll have uh, problems on both sides of it. You can yeah. have it on each, either side. So and I always like to explain like this too, like he's talking about. So the thing that you have to understand about the muscles. So the muscle is supposed to be maybe, say, six inches long. Yeah. But in this case, it's only three. That's what happens. Is you have it shortened here, it's three inches long. Whenever it's supposed to be six inches long, if it's not technically elongating the six inches because you're always in a shortened state, then technically what's going to happen, the only thing, yeah. like, it's got to think about like a rope. If a rope's supposed to be this long, I'll go this way, this long, yeah. and yours is this long, well, the thing is, is if it's supposed to go this long, it's going to pull this way. Because, you know, with, if that muscle doesn't elongate and it lost that ability to do so because you've been in that position for so long, the only thing that it can move is the things it's attached to. So then that's where technically the vertebrae gets pulled forward like he's talking about. And really, like for a lot of people, you were saying like it, it happens for people that are sitting for long periods of time in the car a lot, things along yep. those yeah, lines. Yeah. Any, anyone where that's, that uh, leg is in a shortened position for a long time. Sometimes people sleep in a curled up ball yeah. position, that's going to shorten that muscle. So it's like, it's all those little things that you're sitting where your femur and body are closer to each other. Like yeah. that. So mm -hmm. like that's usually the 
scenario. Yeah. yeah. So as far as mobility and strengthening go, what's going to be the plan for this particular? Yep. So diagnosis? first one is we have to release and get the we have to stretch the psoas. So really, we're going to have to get this and this moving apart from each other. And a lot of times, what we'll see is like it's going to be a lot of massage trying to get the psoas uh, to start releasing because yep. there's a lot of like connective tissue that builds a myofascial tissue that builds up over that because it's in a shortened state for long periods of time. We're going to have to break that tissue loose so you can actually start to move that muscle. That would be step one. And then step two, you can go over that one. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of where step one would be the massage of it, like you said. Yep. So you need to make sure you're getting the uh, actual uh, muscle fibers to connect the tissue to break loose. Then you have to elongate it because that's why if you skip that step and you try to stretch it while this muscle isn't moving, it's actually going to make this problem worse. It's going to be pulling that out. So you got to make sure the muscle is actually elongating first. And then the opposite is we got to work on the opposing muscle group strength. So if your hip flexor, so that's what we're looking at, is tight, that means your hip extension is weak. So we got to strengthen those glutes because the same thing's happening. Oh, yeah, hold that real quick. Yep. Is you're, 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 you're in this position again. So it's a kind of another step of the last thing. So to get that back, you've got to be stronger. So whenever you're standing here and this uh, leg goes down, that everything stays in the right spot instead of everything moving out of the position. So you need that backside strength that's holding everything in place to be able to move it all out when it starts moving. So it's like this can be mobile, but if this can't stay stable while you're coming down, you're going to have the same problem. Yep. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I even think another problem yep. that ends up happening is somebody gets really used to the psoas getting utilized all the time. Mm -hmm. And so they end up w with actually weak abdominals because that muscle group that pulls you forward like this is the same, that psoas does the same thing as the abdominals yeah, yeah. do. So what we end up seeing is yes, it's the glute weakness to stabilize, but yep. it's also you find new ways to operate because that with those muscles being really tight, you start losing the ability to use your abdominals. That's true. Something yeah, that we 100%. See. Yeah. So strengthen the abdominals, strengthen your glutes. Do yep. the same answer yep. so far. A lot of these are very yeah, similar yeah. positions, so it's a lot of the same answers. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, like just a smidge difference of the, what's causing the problem. Yep. Okay. Well, let's move on to something that we hear from a lot of people that come into the studio. Uh, sciatic pain. So sciatica. What is going to be... Uh, Technically, how do you describe that, or what's yeah. the definition? For so that? what it is, it's a what they feel when they're in it. They feel like a shooting pain all the way down the leg. Is usually what it is. It can either it really can be anywhere from on your lower back. So you can just yeah, see doing this way. Yeah. So it can even be anywhere. You'll feel the pain from like actually where the vertebrae are into your backside of your butt, potentially all the way down your leg, all the way into your calf. It can be it can run all the way down there because this is a, it's a nerve is what this is. So. The nerves, you know, just like this, it's, it's literally one of these nerve roots that keep coming out and your nerves go all the way through your whole entire body. But this one specific nerve literally will go, actually start here, it'll just come out from these vertebrae here and it'll go down into this little hole right here and then it's going to come out the backside here, just like this, come through here and then it's going to go right down your whole leg. So that's what the, that is. And what's happening is something's pinching that. So something's putting pressure on that nerve, and it can happen at any point in this uh, pathway. Um, so it could literally start, and it could be, you know, this narrowing we talked about, and it could be on that nerve. Like, that's one area. But then it also, as it's coming through this, there's muscle. There's a, the piriformis is a muscle that's right through here that it's going to be running right underneath. That could be pinching over. That's usually one of the number one areas. This is the piriformis right here is where the problem happens. It's not the only, but that's usually the most common. Your big, your glute mass is another big muscle right through here that if it gets tight, it can push on top of that too. But then as we start going down the leg, uh, we see it, it runs right underneath the bicep femoris, one of your hamstring muscles. So it can be any point of that. And then it goes all the way down, so let me get this guy to move up there, all the way back into your calf. So it can go all the way down. So your calf could be pinching on it all the way down here. So it can literally be at any point in that pathway and something's going to be pinching on that. And that's what we do is we go look at Where's the muscle tenderness? Where's the things that aren't moving correctly? So we'll even move and stretch them until we go and we start moving their leg and stretching that glute max and piriformis. We see there's restrictions happening there. That's telling me anytime you move into that movement, you hit the end of the range of motion of that muscle. So now for sure pinching over top of that thing. So that's, that's usually the first spot that you see the problem at is here. But then it also can happen when we're stretching the hamstrings. If you see that, like, ooh, there's restriction there. 
that 100% can be the problem where it's happening at too. Yeah, and then it could be even like technically muscular knots going in anywhere down there yes. at the same yes, time yes, yes. could be an aspect too. So things that need to be massaged out, areas that have gotten built up maybe due to injury or overuse or something along those lines um, can cause it. And really, like a lot of things that I've noticed with seeing people that have had it, a lot of times it actually starts as a hip issue and then moves itself yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. So it's like literally they start to experience it up here into the glute and then it starts moving slowly as it gets worse down into your calf. So yeah. it's like as you keep going and as you you know procrastinate on it, really don't get it taken care of, it just keeps getting worse and keeps moving further down the leg more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's usually how that works. It's a, it keeps a problem never gets better on its own. It just keeps exp expanding and getting worse and worse and worse. So. That's what we'll see. It, it'll literally expand, start here, and then it'll go all the way down the pathway, for sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, uh, so how do you guys at TNT go ahead and start uh, taking care of static nerve pain, making sure that that's no longer a problem for people? Yep. The number one place is it's almost, I would say, I'm going to throw a percentage, 80% of the time, this piriformis or glute max. Mm -hmm. So... Don't think that's, that's real science, but that's that's when I, my that's first thought. That's what we've seen. The yeah, most yeah. Yes. Eight, eight out of ten of what we see yeah, yeah. is that. It starts there. So that's the number one place we go to look at. Mm -hmm. We start looking at the range of motion of your glute and piriformis, and we start massaging and see if there's any tenderness in that. So those are the first things. So my goal is to try to get that range of motion back in that glute and piriformis. If I can get that, and then I see how uh, the range of motion is feeling, you stand up, and you will, after I go, okay, yeah, that's moving now, stand up, and you're like, yep, that feels a lot better. That tells me that's where it was coming from. But if I did that and it's not the problem, you're like, ah, it's still feeling it. Now I start moving down the chain. Then I would go to the next one would be the bicep femoris, the hamstring. So I'd go see, is that moving correctly? You know, is there any knots, any tenderness in that? And keep on moving all the way down. If that's not the one that does it, go down to the calf. Is that, it's cause, and it's also how far down the path do you feel it? So if you're feeling it all the way down the calf, uh, or like if you're only feeling it in your butt, it's probably not in the calf. You're not, it's not down that yet. But if you're feeling it in the calf, I want to be thinking of all the pathways all the way down there. That could be. It's because if you just fix the calf now, and then you're going to feel it in the hamstring. If you yeah. just feel it in the hamstring, that's going to be into the glute. So yeah. it's like, it's, that, it's exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, events. Yeah, yes, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's usually, the higher chances it's going to be at the top than the bottom. So that's usually what we do is we just work our way down, follow that sciatic nerve the whole way down the body and see if there's anything impinging on it. And that's what we do. And until we end up release it, release the tension that's on pinching over top of the nerve. Yeah. And I think that this is a good point to talk about stretches that people do at home, too, because whenever it comes to sciatic, a lot of times your solution is going to be thoroughly stretching yourself. And if you're coming in, you know, two, maybe three times a week, that's going to help. But if you're doing it at home daily, that's how you're going to prevent a problem in the long term. 100%. Too. Yes. And, a, and a lot of times what we see with people that have it or a lot of people are standing for long periods of time. So like industrial type work, mm -hmm. things like that. A lot of people out in PNG. So if you work out PNG and you have sciatica, you should probably be listening. To <laughs> <laughs> you see Every single person that's came in from there has had sciatica. Yeah, yeah. And that's always been it. It's been their hamstrings, glutes, and their calves have been horrible because you know you're on concrete floors for yeah. you know yeah. all yeah. all day long. Yeah, that's a very common. Thing. And that's part of your job, and it's not like you're gonna quit your job, yeah. so then you're gonna have to do stretching to counteract that otherwise. Yeah, you have to make sure you're you take care of yourself. Yeah. At yeah. that point in time, just doing it, stretching it home for only for you know two to three times a week isn't even come close to fixing mm -hmm. it. You need to now get very repetitive. If you're standing on your feet for 12, 10 hours and 12 hours a day, you better be making sure you're stretching once, two to three times a day. You know, and those take very long. Like even just a good three to five minutes of stretching can make a world of difference mm -hmm. uh, three for three times a day. You know, if you just did that for that little time. Yep, yep. for sure. Building habits. Yes, 100%. Okay, guys, uh, last one for today is going to be SI joint dysfunction. So tell me a little bit about what causes that. Okay, so what that is is, so SI meaning your sacrum and your ilium, okay? That's what this bone, the, this bone is your ilium, and this bone is your sacrum, okay? It's when, and you can see here, there's a little uh, spacing, uh, and it's, yeah, you need, you need to look better. Probably more from the front. Yeah, uh, just this this little spacing right in there. Yeah, yeah right they're there. just Perfect. right there. Perfect. So this little uh, spacing and this little crease right here in it, uh, it is it is that's the SI joint. That that should be nice and snug, and they should say stay up against each other. But there's no like nothing that necessarily holds it to make sure it stays there. So what happens when you have an SI dysfunction is those those two bones are starting to separate. Is what's happening. So like 
Whenever those two, two bones separate, it can cause a lot of pain. And then that's what we're looking at is how do we make sure those two bones are staying back together? So what we look at is there's something that's pulling those two bones in two different directions and pulling them apart. So the most common things we see is there's something on the front side of the, the pelvis here, the ilium here, and it pulls it forward. And then looking back here on the uh, actual sacrum, there's something attached on the back side of the sacrum pulling it the opposite direction. So it's something pulling this forward and this back getting separation. And that's what happens when you get your SI joint out. You probably heard that. That's when they say your SI joints out, that's what it is. Yeah, you, you, those two bones have now kind of came apart and it's cause two muscles are pulling them out of, part, out of a position is what it is. So you gotta release the two muscles so that when the bones can get there, they can stay there. So some things that happen, and this is where we see too is, the longer your SI joint is out, the more inflammation, it just shoots inflammation there and it causes irritation and it can cause everything around that hip to get tight. So if you're having that problem, you need to get to, you know, get that SI joint back in position as quickly as possible. So uh, some things that to know if it's your SI joint, if you can't put, if you like go to put weight on your leg and your body cannot, your leg cannot hold body weight without it being extremely painful, that's a huge sign for a SI joint. You're like laying on your back and you lift that leg up and you have no strength to lift that leg up. That's a sign that your SI joints out. It's because that all those muscles need a stable base. So those two two uh, spots, they're nice and stable. So if those muscles uh, go to contract. There's nothing moving. So when I, what's happening and whenever you're doing those two things, you go to activate those muscles and those bones are moving. And that's why you're getting the pain because they should be nice and stable just like that. Yeah, it's like a pivot point. So yep. if there's no pivot point back here, so if this is pulled back and this is pulled forward, like you, there's this can't rotate off of anything. So like if that's pulled forward, this is pulled. Uh, you can't know if we're the on this. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. anyways, there's no way to pivot that joint anymore, is because there's no stability holding from the backside. Mm -hmm. So usually, I, we if we want to jump into the yep. plan on how we go about it, because yep. we got to loosen up. A lot of times, it's the uh, quadriceps rectus femoris attached to the ASIS here is what's pulling that forward. TFL, it's really TFL, anything, anything, anything that's yep. attached to the front side of this pelvis can be a problem, mm -hmm. yeah. So then we end up loosening up that, and then the other part is your glute max is attached yep. to your sacrum back here, so then what we end up doing is we start stretching the glute max to try to get those joints to go back together. Mm -hmm. And like he said, a lot of times it's the problem is, you know, if you've been technically, you know, out of position for, you know, a week, couple days even, you need to go to your chiropractor to get that adjusted because a lot of times those muscles, you can't even get you into position to stretch yeah. them because your body's in a protective mechanism at this point. So getting an adjustment is going to be the most helpful. Yeah. Like so we can do, and then what we do is we're trying to get those muscles loose so we can go back into position because they're so tight. They're not, you're going to, we've had it plenty of times where people are trying to get, they can't even, the adjustment can't even go back into place because the muscles are so uh, far apart. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of that we can work on massaging and getting things loosened up in the short, but the real answer, you got to get that joint back. And sometimes it just naturally drop, drops back into place and that sometimes, but the faster you can get that back into place, the less inflammation is going to be there. So the faster we can get everything loosened up and then, because it's part of it's stretching, you got to start stretching these, but if this isn't staying stable and you gotta to try to stretch a muscle that's attached there, it's just gonna pull everything out of position. It's not gonna allow it to that. And so it's that, it's that fine line of keeping that everything in place and then starting to get the muscle work together all at the same time. Yeah, so. for sure. So let's say someone goes to their chiropractor and gets their adjustment. How quickly would you want to start working on muscles at that point? Uh, like, yes, like, immediately. Within 24 yeah. hours. Yeah. Be even, but most, Sometimes most that day could be super beneficial if you're like get it adjusted and it's back in place. Just so it doesn't. Pull yeah, because what's going to happen if you don't work those muscles, the same thing's going to happen, and they're yeah. going to you're going to start walking, you're going to start activating it, and that same problem is going to arise. So because, you, because the muscles that are tight are hip flexors and hip extenders, so that's telling us whenever you're walking, going, <laughs> going, going back and forth. You, even walking can throw yep. it out of bounds. 100%, so it's yeah, like yeah. that's the part that we want to make sure is we want to start loosening up those muscles immediately so you can maintain balance better. And then the overall, and this is what I always notice, especially a lot of people with SI, is their abdominals really weak. The rectus abdominis that attaches to the rib cage to the pubis is really weak and can't hold it stable. So mm -hmm. that's a big problem that we usually yeah, see. Yeah, it's just trunk we, weakness. And it's really it's back to that they, they have tightness in both directions. Yep. It's like you said, so when you're walking is you move your leg this way, it's tight, and you move your leg this way, and it's tight. It's both directions is yep. what it comes down to. And then the strength, they have very minimal core strength and glute strength. It's yep. back to the same same solution. This uh, problem that we had a while ago is the front side hip flexor quads are too tight, uh, and your glutes and abdominals are too weak is what it comes down to. It's almost very, well, the first two and then this one are almost exactly the same kind of solutions. you got to keep these things moving out. It's just 
a different skeletal sp uh, structure is moving caused by the same problem. It's mainly what it comes down to. Yeah, for sure. Okay, uh, do you guys have anything else about spinal issues, diagnosis, medical terms that you maybe haven't hit on yet? Um, I don't think so. I think that? just make sure you like, and this is where like, whenever we're talking about core strengthening, this is the part that we're really focusing on is we're maintaining the balance of the spine and the pelvis. Yep. Those two, and then obviously your femur as well. Yeah. So we're trying to be able to maintain the balance yeah. and equalizing the strength between all those. So if yeah. you're sitting for long periods of day, then we have to be able to you know rebalance that back up. If you're standing for long periods of day, that's an opposite yeah. direction. And literally, that's this is going to pull us yeah. up. So very rarely do we see people that have the posterior uh, tilt like this, but that you know it we, does, see, we do. Yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. have people that have. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, and that's where the most important thing of the core strengthening is the pelvis and spine being able to stay in that no natural neutral state instead of being too far forward, too far back. And that, yeah. That's what he was saying on. So, like, long as we, that's our goal when it comes to core is to keep everything right here in a nice, stable position. So, and this is where I even tell people is like, you got to make sure that you're working the right muscle groups because if, ba uh, based off of the things that you do on a daily basis, you know, you could be different than the other person. Mm -hmm. So like the person, like we said, instead of you being rotated forward, you could be rotated underneath, which we see it. It's maybe at like, you know, one out of 10 people yeah, 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 that yeah. come in with that, but that's still a possibility. So it's like, you want to make sure that you're doing the right exercises, yeah. right stretches. So this sort of evaluation and diagnosing is super important. So coming in for three days, guys, it's yeah, free. Because what could happen is if your quads are tight and causing the problem, you're like, oh, I need to exercise. You go to do squats and wall sits. That's going to make the yeah. two problems worse. Like that's going to make your quads even tighter because you're working the, the quads instead of shortening the quads. So it's yeah. getting the right action plan is the yeah. key. Because mm -hmm. because all you're going to do is like, yeah, I started exercising and it's actually hurting my pe uh, pain worse. But <laughs> yeah, we just it's the quads that are tight. So you're just keeping on rotating that further and further and further in the wrong direction. So mm -hmm. it's causing the problem to get worse. Yeah. So that's the key of the three days is to come in and understand and let us t let you understand where the problem is coming from and which actions need to be there to allow you to release the tension, strengthen the right muscles so that the problem can get better. Because the only way this gets better is you take tension off of this that area instead of adding more tension. So that's what we do in the three days to show you that. And I think this is where a lot of people kind of get into a phase where, ooh, that exercise is bad for me. Like, I don't yeah. need to do that exercise, which in reality, that's not the, it's not that's not the problem. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. that you need to figure out why that's not good for you right now. It's probably because mm -hmm. something's really tight and not allowing you to move correctly, and that's what's causing you to hurt. Yeah. So that's kind of like he was saying, if you're doing wall sits and squats, and it's causing your problem to be worse, it's not that you don't ever need to do that again. You need, we need to figure out why that's not mm -hmm. working properly, and then right get now. you back to... Doing no. those, doing those where everything feels fine. Yeah, because then there's a level of we want to work the opposing wise to get you back to I would say strengths here. Your one side of it's here, and one's here. We got to get this one caught up, and then we can do both of them yeah. to get you yeah. the strength together both at the same because time. Because balance is always the yes. always the key. Yeah. Because then if the other component, if, if you believe oh that exercise is now bad for you, and you never do this exercise, one is going to start getting weaker. And then now you're going to start working on the opposite side, even to make it better. And then now you just created a balance the opposite. Correct, which essentially. 100% can happen. And then now you have a new problem. So it's all about making sure you get things equalized and then working them together. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Well, guys, if you have received any of these diagnoses and you're looking for a non-surgical surgical alternative, definitely check out the three free days. Uh, we're able to really see what makes your pain happen for you individually because like like I've been saying everybody's unique everybody's body and tightnesses are different and so we want to make sure that we take an approach that isn't just like a check off all the boxes for the average person that is specific to you and that's what the three free days is all about you get to hang out with Tyler <laughs> cool. you'll see our faces cool. randomly too um, but make sure that if that's something that you're dealing with reach out to us we'd love to help you uh for the three free days and if you have a friend or a family member make sure you tag them in this video so that they can see this and know that the three free sessions is also available for them uh, and until next time just make sure you like subscribe comment let us know what questions or even diagnosis that you're getting that you want to learn more about and we will see you next time yep see you.